What's going on, guys? It's Mikey Wheels. Um, I wanted to do today's video about <clears throat> excuse me about my Xanax uh, withdrawal, Xanax and Clonopin to be more exact. Um, I didn't have any any idea how hard um, it would be to get off those drugs. I have had experience with withdrawal in the past. Um, when I was younger, I had <clears throat> a lot of back pain. I still have it, but I just don't take drugs for it anymore. But I was on a lot of um, duragesic, fentanyl, which is basically morphine. Um, I was on that for about five or six years when I was younger. And uh, yeah, I almost died because of <clears throat> complications with my digestive system as a result of the medication. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, that withdrawal was about eight months of you know, titrating down um, at a level that I felt comfortable at. Um, and also, I did not feel comfortable doing it over the span of two years, so it was accelerated, but not crazy. Um, however, uh, this time along, when, uh, when it came to the Xanax and the Clonopin, I... <clears throat> I've been on it for, I think I started taking really Xanax when I was maybe 17, 18, a lot more heavily because I was just looking for a um, sleeping resolution. <clears throat> Those of you in pain know um, it's quite difficult to sleep. Um, also when you can't move around it's very difficult to get comfortable. But Xanax is not the option. <laughs> Uh, I took starting off with like a quarter milligram and then up to half, up to one, up to two, <clears throat> up to four, up to six, and then I started combining clonopin with Xanax because I heard it was a little laster, a little longer lasting. Um, but you know, I I wouldn't. I guess I would. I would get sleep. I'd get a lot of sleep, but it was more like. I would turn zombie, um, and those of you who have been on Xanax before will know, uh, you get to a certain point where you don't really know what you're doing, especially if you take a higher dose, um, especially if you don't go to sleep after you take the pill, and it's not even for sleep, it's, I mean, it's for anxiety, it's for um, you know, calming people down, but it will eventually knock you out uh, for quite a long time, but um, it's not worth it. Um, <clears throat> So let's fast forward from 18 to about two years ago when I, my, my stomach stopped working as a result of a lot of emotional stress and a lack of help and a bunch of other reasons, you know, not really eating regularly, not really drinking. So I had a lot of stomach issues. I went into every hospital and basically they ended up putting me on a feeding tube and then over to TPN. And I said, you know what, I think while I'm on a good life support system like TPN, I should try to tackle this Xanax thing because it's never going to be easier than when I'm sick and weighed 78 pounds. I know it doesn't make sense, really, because I was extremely weak. Um, but I think that sometimes you reach a point in your life where you want to make a change physically or emotionally. And once you get that, you know, inkling, uh, once you get that kind of uh, motivation, it's hard to shut off that um, that side of it. So I went really fast because I was on a dose at that point of, I believe it was, it was a total of 12 milligrams a night, um, combination of Xanax and Clonopin. I think it was four milligrams of Xanax a night and six milligrams of, um, excuse me, and eight milligrams of Clonopin. Um, <clears throat> I tinkered around with it for a while, but <clears throat> the doctors told me to get down at a quarter milligram every few weeks. Um, I think I did the math and it would have worked out to like uh, two and a half years. And, uh, and that, Sadie. Sorry, my dog was uh, trying to get into some trouble. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, two and a half years 
to just have to get the drugs out of my system by not taking them anymore and then have to start to get the drugs out of my system just by letting time go on um, <clears throat> was way too much um, time. Uh, I wanted to get my life together <clears throat> ASAP and uh, I think this was in December and uh, what I, my plan, which was kind of crazy, um, was to do a milligram a week, <clears throat> which works out to 12 milligrams, in three months. And the reason I did that, because um, my favorite band, Tool, was uh, playing a show up in San Francisco, and um, uh, buddies with a few guys in the band, and they always take care of me, and I hadn't really been out to a lot of shows and there was a show on my birthday March 12th up in San Francisco and I said nothing would make me happier than to be there with all my friends and celebrating um, you know sobriety or you know on my way there and um, I, I did it it was probably one of the roughest and toughest things I've ever done in my life um, I went through so much agony and pain and um, <clears throat> I had hallucinations. I felt like there were bugs crawling all over the ceiling. I kept seeing shadows, and um, I was paranoid. I, I was anxious all the time. Um, I think for about two weeks, the only face that I could make was... Uh, and I kind of do this thing where whenever I'm in an, an, an immense amount of pain, I smile. And that's the tactic that's always worked to help me through a lot of things because when I fall on the ground and I got no help, smile. When I hurt myself, smile. Because when you smile, you like force the rest of your anatomy to kind of follow the leader, I guess. Um, it just, it's a very powerful tool. And uh, basically, I had such head pain. It felt like I had somebody with a jackhammer on the inside of my brain just going nuts. <laughs> Excuse me, my sinuses are a little messed up. Um, and never mind all of the stomach issues that I had. I had so much gas because my stomach would like, you know, it was keeping a whole body calm for all those years. Everything that the Xanax and Clonopin was doing was relaxing my body. And then all of a sudden, no more relaxing elements. And everything went crazy. Uh, I was blowing up with so much gas that I had to go to the hospital and see if they could do anything to relieve it because my my whole body was so <clears throat> all my muscles were tight everything was just rebelling basically trying to get me to take a pill um, which is what the doctors will try to tell you when getting off of it they'll say oh we'll take take a volume why the hell are you going to take another benzo to get off a of benzo does that make any sense no uh, but doctors basically just want to sell you. Um, you know, it's hard to find a good doctor. And if a doctor is prescribing those kind of medications, unfortunately, most of the time, uh, they've, not most of the time, yeah, most of the time, actually, they've gone the route of becoming a psychiatrist, which is even worse because those doctors just hand it out like candy to everybody because every time they come and see you, it's 100 200 bucks, whatever it is, um, and of course, there's lots of good deals that the uh, companies for all the, the reps for all these pharmaceutical companies make it very, very nice for the doctors to sell their drugs. Um, basically, it's drug dealing, <clears throat> the worst kind of drugs too, because um, there is no worse withdrawal than Xanax or Benzo withdrawal. I have spoken to a lot of people at different um, you know, in different kind of uh, medical facilities, and they've all told me this, different hospitals, different doctors. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you, if you didn't know this, but the most difficult, like the highest problem in all rehabs across the entire country is Xanax and Clonopin. It has like a 1% or 2% success rate. I could be wrong on that. But um, it's a really ugly withdrawal. It's a really ugly medication. Uh, Currently, I have <clears throat> lost a lot of memories of things from things that I did on Xanax, which is basically the last 
you know, whatever years, um, 12 years, 13 years, if not more, um, which is absolutely crazy to think about. But I, I have been going through the most interesting transition that I never thought I'd ever go through in my life. Um, I lived my whole life, you know, trying to shield myself from any kind of pain or even the pain of not sleeping, um, you know, by taking something. I've been taking something for something for something. And the problem with that is you don't feel and you're not present. And I'm so thankful that I've, I, I, I gritted my teeth and just bared through it. And, and people ask me, how did you do it? And what kept you strong throughout the whole thing? Like, why didn't I take a pill when I'm in agony pain? It's because I was so frustrated and, and I maybe was punishing myself a little bit. And maybe that's sometimes how we feel when we're mad at ourselves for getting ourselves into a situation. Um, I'm just speaking for myself here, but you know, I was pissed at myself for allowing myself to be so weak for so many years. But then I said, okay, I'm going to make up for it all by being strong right now. And, um, and man, let me tell you, there's not one thing that I set my mind to that I haven't been able to accomplish that I really wanted. Um, starting with moving here and living alone, um, you know, it was, everybody was telling me, yeah, okay, <laughs> how are you going to do anything? If you want to do it, you'll do it. <clears throat> and I'm not advocating you go out and drop, um, you know, titrate down that fast because it was really not a recommended thing to do. I just, this is my personal preference. My personal preference was to just get the system, get, get my system clean and get it out as quickly as possible. Um, unfortunately, there's not that much information out there on what to do and how to handle it or what it does or, you know, it's, doctors know a lot more about how it'll affect you when you're on it as opposed to how you will be when you get off it. Um, <clears throat> nobody ever told me, hey, if you get up to a couple a couple milligrams and you try to get off of it, your body's going to fight you really badly. Nobody ever told me that. They just said, oh, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to keep going up. But we need explanations. Um, and doctors should be a little bit more clear about um, the realities of things as opposed to just saying, oh, yeah, well, you're having trouble, you're stressed out, um, Oh, oh, okay, here you go. Take this. You want this? I'll give it to you. Um, you know, my advice for anybody that's on those medications is really assess why you're on the medication. If you really, really need to be on it, then I understand. If you're epileptic and it helps you not have seizures, and I use that excuse for a long time too. It's not an excuse. It's just I, if I didn't take my pills back in the day, I would have a seizure. And I had two or three episodes where I had a really bad seizure. Um, but isn't it amazing that coming off the Xanax with one milligram down every week and my body fighting me, I didn't have a seizure. And I'm alive and I'm kicking ass. My stomach works now because I fixed it with apple cider vinegar and magnesium and everything natural because medications suck and basically just kill your body. Um, and here I am today, feeling great, weighing a healthy amount. Um, just killing it, you know, just killing it. And I, I would have never guessed that it would have felt this good. I knew that it'd be better. I knew that as soon as I got off the Xanax, life would be different. I just didn't have any clue that it would be different as in like a rebirth of who I am and what I am. And, you know, it was, it was worth it. And it was uncomfortable. Let me tell you, like, I'm a very social and outgoing person. And this is a little preview into what kind of crazy was going on in my head. I was at a dog park, and <clears throat> this is maybe six months after my withdrawal began, after I got off the last pill. And I was feeling all right, you know, not too bad, but I'm sitting at one end of the dog park, and I'm looking all the way at the other end, and I'm talking to some stranger. And I say, you see those people over there? And she goes, uh-huh. I said, I'm intimidated by them. She just looked at me like, okay, crazy person, what the hell's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know, they just they feel like they like own it or like that's their section and I just, I don't want to go over there. And 
She just looked at me like I'm fucking crazy because I was fucking crazy. You know, these medications don't really help. <laughs> they replace, they give you artificial, they give you a false sense of this, a false sense of that. And, you know, sometimes you should be a little bit, you know, you have a sense of danger sometimes. You have a sense of, 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 of holding back. And those medications can just, you know, they made me feel like I was unstoppable when I was younger. I did a lot of things that I'm not sure I would have done if I wasn't on Xanax. So many dangerous things. Maybe it's me getting older now, but maybe it's me just thinking properly and just not going into everything without any anxiety about it. Like, oh yeah, sure. I can go down that hill in Hawaii at 75 miles an hour and I'll be all right. It's only a manual wheelchair. What's the, what's the big deal? The big deal is I could have been paralyzed by the end of that roll. Was it worth it? Yes. But I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to not have a, con a cocktail of drugs to take every evening. Um, and I have to say this, uh, medical marijuana saved my ass going through my withdrawal. Uh, the amount of nausea I had, had the lack of appetite, just the throwing up, the days in the bathroom. If I didn't have my nausea relief, if I didn't have that that comfort for my whole entire body without hurting my entire body. The difference between medical marijuana and those pills is medical marijuana, we have, you know, we're supposed to have medical marijuana. There's receptors for THC in our body. Now, there's benzo receptors too. That's why it works with our body. But this is natural. This is untouched. This is from the ground. And it has so many healing properties. I would not rest much. I would not eat much. I would not do a lot of things without that medication. Now, um, it's hard to get, and not everybody can access it where they're at. Sometimes you got to move. I had to move from New Jersey here, and it was the best thing I ever did. Um, had I not done that, I would have just not been living. I might have, I would have been alive, but I wouldn't have been living. And um, I really like living. And um, I guess I'm going to wrap it up because it's been kind of a long one. But um, I just want to let you know, if you're thinking about getting off Xanax and you want to do it and you need any kind of advice or just someone to talk to, let me know. Write me. Because I really don't want people to live in hell. I lived in hell for many years and I didn't even realize I was living in hell. And... It breaks my heart when people give up on the withdrawal and kind of just go into it and just keep taking the medication, give it an oh well kind of scenario. You are so much more powerful than your fears and your doubts. You know, it, it helps to have a goal. And the goal might not just be getting off the Xanax, but to have a goal for you. Something that'll allow you to look past the hell and just smile about it. Like me, my goal was freedom, happiness, health, freedom from the drugs. And that goal, that, that dream in my head kept me going and kept me strong through all of the hell. And let me tell you, it, I was in the bathroom so damn much, I used to have bathroom parties where me and all my friends would hang out in the bathroom with me sitting on the pooper, just sitting there with a the towel over my lap with music on getting the vibes going, and just love. Friends showing me love, and that is what healed my stomach. It was people, it was me, it was me not allowing the situation to become me. It was just a situation that was going to go away. And through everyone, and through me, and through my dog, you know, I'm, I did what a lot of people can't do with medication. It's because we are so much more powerful than we know. And, and usually we don't know it until we have to know it or until we want to know it. It's tough. Life is tough. Getting through, diff getting through withdrawal is a very diff difficult thing. It's not for the, for the light. It's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the people that are thinking it's just going to be eh. It can be really ugly. But life can be ugly. Uh... uh Problems can be ugly. Relationships can be ugly. But that doesn't mean it has to stay that way. It can be any way you want it to be. 
you can literally paint a picture in your head and create that reality just by believing in it. So be awesome, be courageous, don't give up. And just remember, if today sucks, there's always another day. Don't, don't allow the weight of the day to slow you down for tomorrow. Just pick yourself up. Just be thankful for the things that you do have in your life because we do have things that we forget about that are really big gifts. Like, you know? It's good stuff. It happens on its own and it keeps us going. So believe in yourself. I believe in you. You can do anything you want to or nothing. You know, that's our choice as human beings. But I know you guys want the best for your lives. So don't give up. Lots of love. I'm out of here. Probably one of my longest videos in a while. But I've been wanting to talk about this for a while because I didn't really want to make a video about it because I didn't want to congratulate myself or I didn't want to make a big deal. But you know, if you do something big, you are a big deal. You, you, you did something huge. Don't take credit away from yourself. Some, like I said, I, I'm still punishing. I was still punishing myself by not making a video because I didn't want to be like, oh yeah, look what I did. But I need to do this for anybody else that's in my situation who goes, what the fuck do I do? Shit, what do I do? You just go for it. You don't give up. You research and you just believe in yourself. Because that's all I do for myself and it's gotten me almost every dream that I've ever wanted in my life. Now that I'm finally sober and clear-headed, it's, it's time for the rest of those dreams. So, and that's unfolding every single day. So, much love to you. I'm going to go. And um, once again, stay awesome.